Here's your wrestling news for January 21st, 2021. And today's headlines include WWE's rule for superstars declaring themselves into Royal Rumble match explained. WWE creative instructed Adam Pearce to tweet out new Royal Rumble rule. Rey Mysterio could betray Dominic in Royal Rumble match. Beth Phoenix returns to live commentary during WWE NXT. Why Bailey was in the building for WWE NXT tonight. Major update on Jason Jordan's health and WWE status. Why WWE announced WrestleMania details in advance. How many fans is WWE allowing into WrestleMania 37? Or major plans concerning WrestleMania are revealed. Shocking news as Undertaker opens up about history of steroids in WWE. Booker T hits back at WWE Hall of Famer for criticizing AEW and more. We are kicking off today with the Royal Rumble and we previously covered how there's no clear rules about how superstars are allowed to enter the Rumble match, with some names being able to declare themselves and others having to qualify. Even Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, the Impact World Tag Team Champions, recently poked fun of this lack of rules as they declared themselves for this month's men's Rumble match, and now Adam Pearce has officially laid out the rules. On Twitter, the WWE official explained how Rumble entries are determined, though it didn't explain much, as he said, It's actually pretty simple. Those that have been granted the ability to simply declare entry into the Royal Rumble by management are free to do so. Those that haven't must qualify. I don't write the rules, I enforce them. Though this explains why some superstars are allowed to just announce they're in the Rumble match, it doesn't explain how WWE decides between those allowed to enter and those who have to qualify. Pierce didn't specify which names are free to announce their own entry either, and that may be because this wasn't his own tweet. Ringside News are reporting that this tweet was handed to Pierce by WWE Creative as they wanted to give an explanation as to why WWE is treating some superstars differently this year. It was also noted that this kind of thing happens all the time across WWE's various social media platforms and that this should be seen by fans as an official rule and more than just a tweet. With 10 more days until the Royal Rumble, there's still plenty of spots left in both Rumble matches, and we'll have to see who gets to declare themselves and who has to earn their spot. One man who knows about winning the Royal Rumble is Rey Mysterio, who won the 2006 Rumble match from the number 2 position. With 30 superstars all trying to win, the former world champion knows that you can't trust anyone in the Rumble match, and during the bump, said that he isn't above throwing his own son Dominic over the top rope if it comes to it. He said, We have to do it. There's just no other option. Either he goes or I go, but I'm sure that I get first dibs on that, so he's going over the top. It wasn't long after Dominic's debut last year that fans speculated on a possible heel turn and father-son feud between himself and Ray. So far that hasn't happened, though a betrayal and heel turn by Dominic at the Rumble could lead to one of the most emotional matches of all time at WrestleMania 37 between father and son. Whether this betrayal happens on January 31st remains to be seen, but we know that Dominic can't rely on anyone in the Rumble match, not even his dad, and that Ray should keep an eye out for a betrayal by his son. NXT news next as Vic Joseph, Wade Barrett, and Beth Phoenix have been calling the action for some time now, despite the Hall of Famer commentating from her own home due to the ongoing global situation. That all changed this week as the Glamazon was live beside Joseph and Barrett in what was a welcome surprise, given that it's been a long time since she's been able to make a live NXT event. Time will tell if Beth continues to appear live every week for WWE NXT, but she was around this week, much to the delight of fans watching at home. Speaking of unlikely faces in the Capitol Wrestling Center, Bayley recently made it clear that she wanted to be in the Women's Dusty Classic, and though she didn't make the brackets, she did make it to the show. During a Twitter interaction where she joked about entering the tournament with the Glamazon, Bailey sent a photo of herself in the Capitol Wrestling Center with a very serious expression clear under her mask. Although Bailey was present, she didn't make herself known during last night's NXT, but even without being in the tournament, we're confident that the former NXT Women's Champion enjoyed her homecoming to the brand she helped put on the map. Now this time next week will mark three years since Jason Jordan's last WWE match after he had to have neck surgery due to an injury. Since then, Jordan's future in the ring has seemed very bleak, 
as he's transitioned to working backstage as a producer. But according to his former partner Chad Gable, there are plans for a return. Speaking on The Bump, Gable said he's willing to reunite American Alpha with Jordan, who he referred to as his best friend. He said, It's unfortunate what happened to him with his injury, but you never say never. He's working on it, he's trying to get back. Jordan and Gable held both the NXT and SmackDown tag titles together before they were split in 2017, when Jordan was revealed as Kurt Angle's son. Though Jordan's last match was at the 2018 Royal Rumble, his injury meant that he didn't tag in once during his and Seth Rollins' Raw tag title defense against The Bar. And we're sure this isn't what Jordan wants his final image as a WWE superstar to be. Over to Raw next, as Randy Orton appeared this week for the first time since he was burned from a fireball thrown by Alexa Bliss, sporting a protective face mask over his burns. Orton has said that he plans on burning everyone's hopes by winning the Royal Rumble match for the third time, and he may have some assistance in the 30-man match. On Twitter, Retribution's T-Bar offered the Viper an invitation to join the group, saying that a spot is still open for the former world champion. Orton has shown a lot of traits shared by Retribution, such as wanting revenge on others and wearing a weird mask, and having the group on his side would only help his Rumble chances. The former world champion is no stranger to being part of a faction, but whether the near 19-year veteran of WWE's main roster would be willing to take orders from Mustafa Ali is hard to say. WrestleMania news next, as in an unprecedented move, WWE have announced their next three shows long in advance. WrestleMania's 37, 38, and 39 have all been confirmed, and during an interview with Tony Maglio of The Wrap, Stephanie McMahon explained the logic behind this decision. It helps us for planning purposes. It helps our fans plan their trips. It helps in so many different capacities. And now, we can really work with all of our partners across the board in all of these major cities. Also, during this time, I think people need hope, and I think you need something to look forward to. Now, fans will have years to prepare for WrestleManias coming to their states, but of course, all plans currently hinge on the ongoing global situation improving before next year. WrestleMania 37 will see the return of live fans in a limited capacity across its two days, and now we have an idea of how many fans will pack the Raymond James Stadium. WrestleVotes is reporting that the company will allow upwards of 25,000 fans into each night of WrestleMania 37, though they'll have to abide by social distancing guidelines. There's still no word on when tickets will go on sale or how much they'll cost, but with just 25,000 tickets up for grabs each night, we expect they'll go fast, no matter the cost. WrestleMania 37 will mark WWE's first live fans on pay-per-view in over a year, and WrestleVotes are also reporting that WWE are discussing what comes after the showcase of the Immortals. According to their report, there's some in WWE who would like to have what's being called a soft opening, which would see the return of touring for live TV, but not for house shows. One major factor behind this is that trying to find a location for the Thunderdome after WrestleMania comes with a lot of headaches. The United States is slowly reopening, despite the ongoing global situation showing little signs of slowing down or going away, but with reports that WWE's deal with Tropicana Field ends in April, it may not be long before WWE returns to touring the country. This year's WrestleMania will be just the second time in history the show has been split into two days, after last year's WrestleMania 36 was the first. One thing that Mania 36 was praised for was that the show was far easier to digest, and according to PW Insider, this year's WrestleMania won't be a lengthy chore like some recent one-night shows. Their report indicated that each night of WrestleMania 37 will be three hours in length, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern and ending at 10 p.m. It's likely that WWE will include a kickoff show, and whilst a total six hours over two days does sound far easier than WrestleMania 35, which was an eight-hour show over one night, plans could always change. Undertaker news next as the dead man continues to speak more candidly about his legendary career, and this week spoke about one of wrestling's most controversial topics, steroids. Speaking on the Joe Rogan experience, the Phenom opened up about the old mindset towards steroids in WWE, saying, There was a time when you had to be jacked. Especially with the big guys, there was a stigma. You had to be 300 pounds. In our head, nobody gives a They're interested in the characters we are on TV, but in our head it was like, I gotta be 350 pounds. 
Of course, now WWE has a strict policy which prevents the use of steroids, and though the company is more open to pushing smaller stars such as Finn Balor, AJ Styles, and Daniel Bryan, that wasn't always the case, according to the Phenom. More Mania news now as this year's show will have live fans in attendance, but there won't be much for those fans other than the show itself. PW Insider reports that WWE's primary concern is making sure fans get to and from Raymond James Stadium safely, and there's currently no other plans for WrestleMania weekend other than the show itself. This is a far cry from previous years, which traditionally see WWE's Access Convention as well as the Hall of Fame, which are usually sold to fans as part of a wider WrestleMania week package. There have been reports that WWE is considering a virtual Hall of Fame, though nothing has been locked in place, and although WWE has some tough decisions to make before April 10th, fans shouldn't expect to attend anything other than the show of shows. AEW news next as the company isn't immune from both dishing out and taking criticism, and one person who seemingly isn't a fan is Bully Ray. Recently, the WWE Hall of Famer said that NXT is better than AEW, arguing that the company can get, quote, indie-rific at times, compared to the more polished NXT, who he says has an extremely tight work rate. Now, Booker T has replied with his own defense of the All Elite promotion, as during his Hall of Fame podcast, Booker spoke about how no show is better or worse than the other, but every company has to figure out a way of doing similar things differently. He explained, Professional wrestling has always been entertainment-based. One thing you can rest assured on with AEW is not every match is going to look the same because those guys are a fluctuation of indie guys and more experienced guys like Jon Moxley going to look totally different than some of the other guys. Since AEW started, there's been plenty of fan warfare between AEW fans and WWE fans, and perhaps everyone should take a page out of Booker's book and appreciate what the shows are doing right and what makes them different. Over to NXT as the brand has picked up three huge names for its women's division. During the bump, the women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic revealed three names fans hadn't seen before, namely Zoe Stark, Gigi Dolan, and Cora Jade. In a tweet from the official NXT account, these new stars were explained as being Lacey Ryan, Priscilla Kelly, and Elena Black. Black and Kelly will be teaming in the first round to face Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, whilst Ryan will team with Marina Shafir to take on Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. All three signings have proven themselves on the indies, as well as promotions such as Impact, and this is clearly a big score for the black and gold brand. And we're ending with more from the black and gold brand, as though Ryan and Shafir will be an impressive team, there's been questions about why Shafir isn't teaming with her usual partner, Jessamyn Duke. According to Fightful, Duke, who hasn't been seen since she appeared on Raw Underground, isn't injured, but is instead focused on creating content for Up Up Down Down. She, alongside Mia Yim, Dakota Kai, and Shayna Baszler, have all been deemed co-commissioners of Xavier Woods' YouTube channel, and the report noted that Duke is now effectively creating digital content for WWE full-time and prefers that than wrestling in the current climate. The MMA for Horsewoman was a full-time game streamer before she was signed by WWE, and at this time, there's no plans to bring Jessamyn Duke back to TV in any capacity.